when you put the glasses on of what blockchain tech is about to solve yeah. real world problems, when you look at the normal world of commerce, to me, DeFi is not about lending and borrowing only and liquidity yeah. and yield and all that only. It is about how do we do commerce in the new world? Imagine a situation. This is something we've publicly been saying that we're building and we are in the background, right? Yeah. In the construction space, a builder might be doing work for 30 days, buying materials, yeah. hiring staff, and then another 30 days, they, you know, they invoice and they wait another 30 days. There's 60 yeah. days. They don't know if the other side has money. You're getting paid by your employer. You don't know if they've got money, but in a blockchain world, you can see, for example, because we, we've created something and others are, you know, potentially doing this where yeah. you have to put up some collateral or there has to be a visibility that I can see that yeah. the other side has money because if they take that out or if they do something in that wallet, I know as a consultant or a builder or a contractor that um, something's up and yeah. it can avoid me continuing to do work if there's yeah. issues in the liquidity. So exactly. why don't we have transparency like that? And I, I agree that there's some things that need to be kept private, but just mm. because the tool is there doesn't mean we use of everything. We have to be pragmatic exactly. with how we do it. But these are tools. It's like yeah. when people get angry at NFTs, it's like getting angry at a PDF. What are you doing, yeah. right? I can understand if you're angry at the bad behavior, but some people are yeah. angry at the tech without understanding. And it's, it's just like, do we think that the world as it is now, we're not going to get any better? Innovation yeah. is inevitable. It's obviously the right innovation that we need, but you can't stop the technology that's moving forward. This is the beauty of the space, and that's why we rode the wave that we're on. So FTX and all this kind of stuff, all that stuff that I just ran you through, we're either mm. talking about it and helping others educate about that. We've got a yeah. document that's online, that's public, that's, we call it FUD bill, you know, the fear, yeah. uncertainty, and doubt, where it's all the common misconceptions about blockchain. And we okay. wrote it in March last year, and we made it publicly yeah. available. Those are old arguments, but they're still true. They still true. haven't changed. Yeah. So every yeah, time a bear market yeah. is there, they will stand true. That's it. And look, there are things like I mentioned Luna before, and there's, um, yeah. you know, that's code, but that was more of a design flaw. And hmm. anytime when, you know, there are these new players that come up and say that, oh, we're going to do an algorithmic stable coin. Well, yeah. people look at that with a bit more skepticism. Um, yeah. But at least it is code. So it's it's going to be interesting where we get to because we are going to, you know, try more things. We are going to fail. But if we put up yep. the right kind of guardrails, and this is the thing with the whole FTX and Luna and even TradFi type scams and issues, if yeah. we use blockchain technology, the value transfer, the automation, the transparency, we could actually solve problems not just in DeFi and crypto and all that, but yeah. also in, in TradFi. Supply well. chain. Supply chain. Why, every, why, every, you know. Yeah. It's ironic, man. It's ironic because yeah. people say, oh, it's blockchain is failing. No, blockchain is needed even more. Yeah. It's it's even telling you that the reason that why we need this kind of technology and, you know, uh, you can't have this kind of um, disparity in trust and also have so many